The opening of the uh, gold mining fields in Kalgoorlie depended crucially on transport, particularly railways. Welcome to this description of the development of train service between Perth and Kalgoorlie. The West Australian Railway Network in the early 1900s. Railways played an important part in the development of Western Australia and there are a considerable number of websites dedicated to the history and preservation of West Australian railways. The importance of railways in Australia has been recognised in Australian stamps. In 1874 a survey was conducted to build a railway from Fremantle to Perth. This railway, called the Eastern Railway, was completed from Fremantle to Guildford in 1881. At that time, Perth had a population of about 6,000 people. In spite of strong political pressure to build the railway south of the river, it was decided to build the railway north of the river to avoid the cost of the bridge across the Narrows. Navvies working on the railway. The railway from Fremantle to Guildford stopped at places like East and North Fremantle, Pinamont, Subiaco, North Perth, Perth, East Perth, and Guildford. This uh, photograph celebrates the turning of the stars for the beginning of the railway in Mitten. Prior to 1900, all the equipment needed for railways was manufactured in the Fremantle Railway Workshops, pictured here. The celebration recognizing the opening of the railway in Claremont. The appointment of a new engineer, C.Y. O'Connor, led to the development of a much larger railway workshop located in Midden here pictured from the air. The Midland Railway workshops were shut down at last in the mid-1990s and at its height employed 3,000 men. It was a considerable manufacturing establishment. There was heavy engineering works to manufacture tra tramways locomotives and railway cars. A locomotive is pictured under construction here. Between 1890 and 1900 the Midland Railway Company commenced with land grants from the government. It was to extend its railway eventually almost to Geraldton and was taken over by the government in 1964. Many of the locomotives which were to be used in West Australian Railways were manufactured in the Midland Railway workshops. Railway boxcars under manufacture in Block 1 of the Mid Midland Railway workshops. The workshops covered a considerable number of hectares. Railway cars under construction an early locomotive. Another locomotive manufactured at the Minton Railway Workshops. Railway cars under construction at the Minton Railway Workshops. By 1884, the Eastern Railway had been extended 41 kilometers to Shitville, east of Perth. This was called the first route. The first route suffered serious problems because of the steepness of the grade and the light weight of the tracks. It was decided in the early 1890s to construct a second route with more mild grades.
This route, completed in 1896, contained West Australia's only railway tunnel. In uh, 1944, during the Second World War, three, uh, three people were asphyxiated in the engine while going through this tunnel. The second route was operated until February 1966. The discovery of gold in the early 1890s, first of all at Southern Cross, then Kugardi, and in 1893 in Kalgoorlie, led to the construction of the Eastern Goldfields Railway from Northern to Kalgoorlie. The Eastern Goldfields Railway was extremely important in the development of Kalgoorlie. This railway was completed from Perth to Calgary by 1896. The route uh, can be seen here running from Perth to Calgary. It goes through such places as Northern, Meriden, Southern Cross, to Gardy, arriving about 800 kilometers later in Kalgoorlie. The route um, followed pretty well the same direction as the water pipeline which was built with the support of the railway. Celebrating the opening of the Eastern Goldfield Railway in Kalgoorlie in 1896 The uh, completion of the railway led to an easy way of transporting the pipes for the construction of the water line. In addition to pipes, the railway was very useful in transporting wood and mining equipment as well as the food products. It made Perth a metropolis and very wealthy. The view of the train between Perth and Calcutta became a regular feature. With railways came stations and signaling. A small accident with a derailed car near Kalgoorlie. With the completion of the railway in Kalgoorlie and the rapid growth of the city with the mining, a loop line railway was constructed oh, yeah. around the city to provide local transport. This loop line railway was rapidly expanded as the table shows. Uh, tram car numbers 1 to 15 were operating in 1902 and rapidly expanded from there. Tram cars operating in Kalgoorlie. Now West Australia decided to join Federation provided a railway link was built to Melbourne in the eastern states. This link was promised, and although surveyed in 1907, it was not until the pressures of the First World War that the railway was completed in 1917. Here, navvies are building the line across the Nullarbor. Construction of the trans Australian Railway commenced at each end of the line and the line finally joined in 1917. All the supplies had to be bought in and housing moved from railway camp to railway camp. So that spike in 1917. The new line was called the Trans-Australian Railway and that ran on narrow gauge. Traveling from Perth to Melbourne took almost four days and required transferring trains 
a number of times. A brochure celebrating the Trans Australian Railway fast luxurious travel in air conditioned comfort. The express train that thanked Perth and Calgary with the Trans Australian train was called the West Van. Here's an eastbound passenger train in 1917 leaving Calgary. Railway cars such as were used on the Trans Australian Railway after 1917. These were constructed at the Midland Railway workshops. The uh, completion of the railway led to 1,682 kilometers of track. It also allowed the other train tracks of the other states to link. Meeting an oncoming train, the Nullarbor has the longest straight track in the world. The uh, next film celebrates the opening of the Trans Australian Railway in 1917 with the original footage. You don't need such trappings when driven by train. Driven by train, driven by train. You don't need such trappings when by train. Don't In the 1950s, it became apparent to the West Australian government railways that the original Eastern Railway alignments were not suitable for future traffic. Consequently, in the mid-1960s, a new line was commissioned through the Avon Valley called the Third Route. This route used a standard gauge railway. There had been considerable development of new tracks. With the completion of a broad gauge railway from Perth to Sydney, the Indian Pacific passenger train was commenced in 1970, running through Kalgoorlie. Tourist literature made the Indian Pacific look very attractive. The new route from Perth to Melbourne is shown here. A very interesting travel book on the Indian Pacific. An early Indian Pacific locomotive. The Indian Pacific pulling out of Perth on its way to Kalgoorlie and Sydney. I pulled into a station and screamed at the guard. Oh, just how long will we stand in A modern the Indian Pacific train. Ten bullocks down and I can't get The Indian ride. Pacific continues oh, to this day as a popular train trip across Australia. The six dollar stamp from Antigua celebrating the Indian Pacific. All I can think of is a home and a bed. Kalgoorlie is also serviced by the Prospector, a regular local train running between the two cities with multiple stops.